This is Hades, developed and published by Supergiant Games. Hades is a roguelite game set on the background of the kind of ancient Greek pantheon. You play Zagreus, the unknown son of Hades, uh, and you are trying to get out of Hades the land and away from Hades your dad uh, and uh, reunite with uh, the Olympians who up to this point had no idea you existed. Over the course of your attempt to escape you are engaged in roguelike elements so there's like randomly shifting dungeons, constant death and uh, resetting but you are also aided by the different gods of Olympus so you can get boons from Aphrodite and Athena and Zeus and so on and they all have different elements and attributes associated with them like Zeus obviously lightning and he you know shocks people uh, he also causes jolting which means if an enemy tries to attack you it, they hurt themselves uh, Athena is mostly around defensive stuff so a lot of her things reflect enemy projectiles things like that or make you impervious for a bit Ares god of war is all about killing people so even when you hit somebody you hit them again later on <laughs> which is pretty funny Aphrodite is about charming and weakening enemies so like they've all have their own different strategies and you can mix and match different boons and things like that Zagreus himself has his own kind of basic setup he's got his regular attacks he's got his harder attacks he's got a kind of projectile attack and he can kind of dash about the place and you can gradually upgrade those so you can get additional dashes or have more projectiles and things like that. You can mix and match weapons. You start off with your kind of regular sword, but you can unlock up to six other weapons, uh, which are all very, very different. I really like the fists. <laughs> the fist weapons are probably my favorite. Um, but the bow is really good as well and I really like it. They all have their weaknesses and they all have their strengths. Um, and it all kind of mix and matches with how you like to play the game. Big standout for Hades is just its story and its general plot of how Zagreus interacts with the different characters of the different pantheon of Olympus or the Chthonic gods of Hades. They all have their own very distinct personality. They're all really fun to interact with except Theseus. He's a dick. But everyone else uh, is really great. Uh, and they're all new boyfriends and girlfriends for everybody. Um, I really like the loop that Hades has. It's like you go out as Zagreus, get as far as you can. You know, you interact with some people you might meet out there, or you get a little bit further this time, you learn something new about one of the gods, or maybe you further your relationship with the gods by giving them gifts or something like that. But then you come back to the house of Hades because you got killed, inevitably. You always get killed at, at some point. And then you can go about your house, the Chthonic gods who are, who are down there, so Hades, obviously. But then there's Nyx and uh, Megara and Achilles is hanging out there as well. He's not God, obviously, but he, he's hanging out there and you can talk to him and apparently he trained you and like there's lots of lore being built up, like definitely having the background of the ancient Greek myths, but also like there's a super giant game stamp on everything. Everyone is sexy <laughs> for no apparent reason. Uh, dialogue is really well done, it's something Supergiant games do very well. Bastion, Transistor, Pyre, all their other games all have amazing dialogue. And I've actually yet to come across repeating dialogue, which is nuts, because I've been through the game a number of times now. I have like completed loops, actually managed to escape Hades. Even like the ultimate thing of a roguelike is to manage to get to the end and not die, right? Even, with, even in Hades, it's like, yeah, you did it, great. There's more to do though. That's not where it ends. Um, I don't want to spoil the spoily spoilers, but yeah, there's more to it than just getting out of Hades. So there's still content. I'm still seeing new stuff. It's insane. And this definitely goes back to the game being early access for so long. So it has been iterated on and iterated on and just this is a very polished, probably perfect roguelite. I'm sure there are some elements people don't like. I can't see any <laughs> from my standpoint. Um, it's an amazing game and you should definitely check it out. It's been on Steam Early Access for a very long time, um, but it has only recently come out as version 1.0 on uh, eShop or Nintendo. Uh, definitely give that a check. Uh, there's also a uh, Foley Plays Hades for a bit video somewhere on the channel. You can check that out too.
about you. The ancient blood. Achilles might know what to do with this. This is Paradise Killer, developed by Kaizen Gameworks, published by Fellow Traveler. Paradise Killer is a first-person murder mystery game. It's set on uh, Paradise Island, which is a world outside of reality. Um, I've attempted multiple times to record a blurb about how the game works, so and I've deleted it every single time, so I'm just going to read what it says on the website. I think it's just easier. Paradise is an island that regenerates every few millennia. The psychic power that the alien worshippers within release into the universe is meant to feed and eventually resurrect their fallen deities. But this force also attracts undesired interest from demons, who eventually corrupt each island till the new alternate reality is birthed by the council. The system isn't perfect, but it will be one day. On Perfect 25, the next island to be. But on the eve of rebirth, the council is murdered and Paradise is killed. So in the aftermath of the murder, you are called back from exile. You've been um, exiled from Paradise Island. I think it was Paradise 13 or 14 or something like that where you get exiled. So you've been gone like a couple of million days. A long time. You, de it's, you definitely didn't do it. Paradise Island is home to a bunch of immortals, basically, and they're human slaves who they've kidnapped from the real world or our reality, I suppose. But your job in the game is to interrogate, interview, collect clues based on, you know, who could have killed the council, who had access, who had motive, etc. You do this by just investigating the environment, you know, you pick up different clues, you might find a knife that uh, has suspicious cuts on it, or you might find a bottle of blood that has, you know, inexplicable. You might find that uh, there's a door lock that doesn't actually lock properly or something like that. Uh, you can interrogate different people who may or may not have had motive. You know, you can ascertain their motive or check their alibi. You might check somebody else uh, to corroborate it and, oh, it's broken their alibi, so maybe it was them. Um, but kind of the best part for a Paradise Killer, in my uh, opinion, is just learning about the ridiculous lore the, the game has. It just goes on about uh, aliens and demons, and are demons technically aliens, etc. The different islands and how they got corrupted, kind of class warfare going on on the Paradise Islands and that kind of thing. It's just super interesting. I would actually like to see a lot more about uh, the mythos behind Paradise Killer. But the game itself is, is a lot of fun. Um, like it's very, it's very slow paced. Um, the open world, I think, in one sense, it's fun to kind of look around and see how they've built up this world and like the different lore around it and you find different secrets, you find different characters that are in their own um, different areas and stuff like that. I do find it's a bit distracting in some cases because you are looking for different knickknacks and curios and they give you little pieces of the lore and stuff, but it doesn't actually serve the plot of the game all that much. The plot of the game is really talking to the characters and uh, discovering different pieces of information and then trying to put together that information uh, the way you think um, something might have happened. The game does kind of go on this idea that facts and truth are not the same thing, which is a bit prescient in, in 2020. There you go. Is your truth, does it actually match up with the facts? And even if it doesn't, do you care? You can just force it to be that way. Um, but the way that uh, basically it comes about is that there are lots of different uh, potential killers and they all have, could potentially have done it. Uh, they all could potentially have had um, motive to do it, etc. So it's it's up to you to figure it out. The characters themselves are a lot of fun to interact with. There's a lot of favorites. They're all, in some ways, they're all very endearing. Some of them not so much. <laughs> some of them I'm quite happy to throw under the bus. You know, ethics be damned. <laughs> I really like what I played in Paradise Killer. I can't go too much into the details because it is obviously a murder mystery and any kind of plot details I give you will sort of spoil it for you, but it's uh, a lot of fun to play. And if you can get your hands on it, I would very much recommend it. It is currently available on uh, PC and Nintendo Switch.
Paradise Killer. This is Going Under, developed by Agro Crab and published by Team 17. Going Under is a roguelike uh, dungeon crawler set in a kind of modern day uh, tech startup industry. You play Jackie, who was ostensibly hired to be a marketing intern, but um, since the office is run by an AI, they don't really need a marketing person. So instead, she's sent down into the dungeons to deal with their goblin problem, I guess. Um, basically, you dive into these dungeons that are somewhat um, modeled on like failed startup kind of thing. Like you, you jump into like the first dungeon you jump into is called Joblin, startup run by goblins, which is you know an easy joke, but still it's pretty funny. Um, and basically, you just run around different rooms picking up office junk like keyboards and, and pencils and tablets and laptops and stuff and just beat the shit out of all the denizens. Get to the end of the dungeon, beat the boss, come back and make your boss happy, I guess. And maybe he'll then he'll give you that marketing job, but he never does. He just keeps sending you down into the dungeon because, hey, you're good at that. So why not keep doing it? There's a lot of uh, satirical tech startup stuff and a some of it is a little too real. I, I, one or Once or twice there were some meeting scenes um, but like when they did their stand-ups and stuff, um, some of it was very real and I, I, I felt very seen. <laughs> it was just, okay, this is a little bit too much like my actual day job. Please, please go back to goblins and undead guys in Sticks Coin and stuff like that. Going Under is uh, very fun. It had the uh, unfortunate that it came out the same month as Hades, because uh, Hades is basically a, a perfect roguelike and I don't want to talk too much about it because there's a whole section about Hades. But Going Under definitely has a lot going for it. It's very funny. It's a bit dark, uh, kind of dystopian um, tech stuff, which I I really enjoy. Obviously, it's hitting a particular field, a, a particular industry that will get those jokes probably better than I think anybody else would. But gameplay-wise, the combat's a bit loose. Um, it does feel like you are... Um, you know, not often making, I mean, you are making contact with your weapons, but it just feels a bit spongy, I guess is what I mean to say. You don't really feel the force behind behind melee. The, the controls are a bit unwieldy, jacky kind of floats about. So I do think it gets, it takes a little bit of getting used to the controls because they're not as quick to respond because of the kind of aesthetic they're going for. Jackie is a bit wobbly, but that is obviously what they're going for animation wise. It is very funny looking uh, and I do appreciate that, but it obviously comes with other uh, trade-offs. The dungeons themselves follow like similar themes like Joblin and Sticks Coin is like a Bitcoin startup full of undead people because River Sticks. The dungeons are procedurally generated like you would have in most roguelikes, so it's not always the same every time you go in. And there's like shops and different uh, bonuses and skills you can pick up. Like some of them make the weapon like twice as big. Some of them uh, knock down enemies if they knock you down. Some of them will shock them. You can pick up apps that uh, do like bespoke things for you. Like some of them just bring you uh, a, an, another crate so you can get a random weapon. Some of them uh, refill the durability. Some of them just tell you where to go, which is... <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if they mean that to be as useless <laughs> as it sounds because there's usually only one way to go but anyway there's a lot of fun like jokey stuff in going under which I really really like gameplay wise I don't want to harp on about it but Hades is, is, is the more fun one to play um, but I definitely enjoy a lot of the comedy in going under if you are interested and are potentially not <laughs> in the tech uh, startup industry uh, you mightn't feel it's three three real five U. Going under is on PC, uh, Xbox One, PS4, and Nintendo Switch. campfire developed and published by hello games the last campfire is a kind of chill 
puzzle game. You play this little character called Ember, who appears to have a pillowcase on his head, and you have woken up in possibly purgatory or something like that, and it is your task to rekindle hope um, in these forlorn characters who look a lot like you. They also have pillowcases on their heads. And you do this by kind of going into their head and solving their problems, and their problems are very easily just brain teasers. Uh, fairly simple ones for the most part. And it's all presented in this kind of storybook appearance. There's a narrator narrating all of your actions and the voices of the different characters and things like that. As you go about into different areas, just looking for different forlorn, who are generally like statue-like pillowcases, basically. And you uh, go up to them and you, you touch their head and you go into their minds or whatever and solve whatever the puzzle is, come back out, they get hope back or something. And they toddle off to the local area's campfire. Once you've collected enough of these pillowcase guys uh, around a campfire, the campfire opens up. Or rather, sorry, the new area from the campfire opens up and you can progress to the next one and the next one and the next one and so on. And eventually you'll hit the last campfire. Puzzles are pretty straightforward. It's a very chill game. It's, it's great for just a bit of a re relaxation, a bit of exploration to find the little pillowcase guys and then solve their puzzles and things like that. If you're not particularly interested in puzzle solving, there's also an explorer mode, which I believe removes almost every puzzle in the game. So it then just becomes a question of finding all the different guys, and then that's enough. Either way, it's a pretty short game from Hello Hello Games. They're um, the guys who did No Man's Sky, so this is a Hello Games short, as the studio put it, so something to sort of, I don't know, palate cleanse, I guess, while they're working on No Man's Sky. It's a nice, chill game, bit of brain teasing, bit of fun for just uh, unwinding in the, in the evenings and that kind of thing. Um, the Last Campfire is technically came out in August, but it came out at the end of August, and I didn't actually get around to playing it until September, so that's why it's in the September video. Don't give me any shit. Uh, anyway, The Last Campfire is currently available on PC, Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. This was not how Ember had imagined the end. <laughs> Those were some of the games I played for September 2020. Hades is probably the biggest standout for me. It's just really, really fun to play. And I've always liked Greek mythology. So this kind of super giant games uh, aesthetic for it, it's just, it's just a lot of fun. And then the gameplay itself is like really fast paced. And it's always enjoyable to do a run of Hades. Paradise Killer was also really great, really trippy lore and plot, and the characters are all nuts. It's, it's, it's actually just a ton of fun to play through Paradise Killer. Going Under is really funny. Um, it's not too fun to play, to be honest. It just feels a bit floaty. Combat-wise, I might throw on a couple of the ex uh, accessibility things they have for it, just so I can see more of the jokes, basically. <laughs> And The Last Campfire is um, really chill, fun brain teasers. It's a nice relaxing game and I'm enjoying playing through it. Next month, uh, games for October, um, we'll be looking at the newest installment in the Dark Pictures anthology, Little Hope, which uh, is a little bit um, Silent Hill and a little bit The Witch, or The Vivitch, I suppose. So it's a spooky town, you're not allowed to leave, and then also like Salem witch trial shit. And possibly time travel, I'm not sure. We'll also be looking at Ghost Runner, which is a kind of cyberpunk, mirror's edge, first person speed combat or something. All I know is you die really easily, but it also is really satisfying to get through areas. It looks exciting anyway. Also we'll be looking at Cloudpunk, which is another cyberpunky thing, but you are a courier in this voxel landscape, which looks really nice. It's really pretty and will probably look terrible on YouTube compression. And then there's a little puzzle game called Carto, which I don't know too much about, I only know it's mechanic in that you collect cards to um, map out the area so you can uh, select cards to decide what the next zone is that you want to go to. This made no sense, obviously you should probably watch a video about it, I guess. I don't know. Or just wait until next month and you'll have a look. If you've ever played a board game that selects um, 
map tiles from like a deck and you like slot them into position based on the map tile you're on. It's kind of like that. And if you haven't played that, wait till next month, I guess. Elsewhere on the channel, I did um, some videos for the games of this month. So there is a, there is a Foley Plays Hades for a bit and Foley Plays Paradise Killer for a bit. And there is a Foley Plays Going Under for a bit. So if you uh, were a bit more interested in those games, you can check those out. There isn't one for a little campfire, just cause I just, just get around to it. Also, I started and finished a Let's Play of Murdered Soul Suspect, which is a very old, well not very old, I suppose, PS3, PS4 era murder mystery game, which I kind of, I kind of like and kind of don't like, but you can see for yourself in the Let's Play, but I mostly played it because I was missing some trophies and I wanted to platinum, so there you go. Um, if you have any suggestions for more LPs, they don't necessarily have to be um, me missing a platinum for it, though that would help. Uh, let me know. Drop a drop a comment or find me on Twitter, etc. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.